Hi, good afternoon. Welcome. We are here in studio. We're going to talk some sports with Val. Kind of an odd day for us on a Thursday, but a lot of things going on, Val. I know you're going to be at the uh, golf sectional tomorrow, and then, of course, we'll be over at Lafayette on Saturday, So plus a uh, few graduations mixed in in, in the uh, meantime. So got a lot of stuff going on, so we're going to do a little show here today for you. So first off, how are you, Val? Yeah, doing great. It's been uh, it's been a sensational softball slash baseball sectionals weekend. We had more extra inning games <laughs> yeah. in that one week than we had the entire regular season, both sports. Yeah, it, uh, it took Rochester uh, baseball almost uh, three and a half games to become sectional champions with the uh, extra innings on uh, with the Manchester game, and then three extra innings. Uh, right in the championship, they only played one extra inning game the entire regular season, then played two in the sectional. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk more about those obviously here in a little bit. And uh, congratulations to both baseball and softball. Not only has it been a little bit of a drought since softball won a sectional, but it's uh, it's been a long time, almost twenty years since both baseball and softball won sectionals in the same year. Right, two thousand five, and yeah, I remember that. I remember that year. I mean, uh, when softball when they had. Uh, Ashley Lowe was their uh, ace pitcher. Of course, she's now Ashley Burris. And I remember the baseball team that year. That was a thrilling sectional. They had to win two. That was back when the sectional started on Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. I, now sectionals end on Memorial Day. But back then it started. Rochester had to win. They had beat North Judson just in the morning game on Memorial Day just to make the afternoon game against Rensselaer. And they won both of those games. They won the Rensselaer game on a walk-off three-run homer by Michael Ziegler. And then they won the sectional final the Friday after Memorial Day on a, on a walk-off uh, RBI. I think it was by Maddie Miller. I remember they beat North Newton. I think it was 3-2. to two. So, yeah, I mean, that was especially I just thought that happened every year. It, it's pretty <laughs> rare. Yeah. I mean, to, to win these, to, you know, okay, and I guess it's, you know, we, we everybody talks about class sports in relation to basketball, but boy, I think class sports has really brought out the best in softball and baseball. I think it leads to really exciting playoffs. Yeah. So we'll get more into that here in a minute. Uh, you got some notes here for some other yeah, uh, I wanted things. To give, I wanted to give a shout out to Stephen Nicasi of Tippecanoe Valley. We have some boys basketball to talk about here in late May. Um, mm-hmm. Stephen was invited to the under, underclass showcase. That's kind of run combined by the Coaches Association and the IHSAA. That'll be at Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis on Friday, June 28th. So I think it's been a while since we've had a kid from this area be invited into the under to the underclass showcase. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you'd like to go to that, it's Friday, June twenty eighth at Ben Davis. It's open to the public. I think it's uh, I think it's five bucks or maybe ten bucks. But yeah, you might want to see it. A lot of a lot of prospects. There can be a lot of coaches, college coaches there, yeah, uh, recruiting. And uh, Joe Luce is going to be there as well. And he is one of the members of the boys' coaching staff. Yeah. Also had uh, uh, I was over at Valley yesterday and doing some testing for graduation coming up on Sunday and they are uh, they are doing some interviews for the girls basketball job I've got uh, some names that they gave me I'm not going to share those yet but uh, no no finals but uh, they are they are whittling down and so some interesting names okay some interesting names just okay. a, a little tease there okay one other valley note uh, there's a new valley alumni football organization called RSKA boosters and they will be having an event, uh, a fundraiser, on Friday, June 7th. And the first hour of it will be at the Valley School, where they'll just show, they're going to show off the new facilities to the alumni. Okay. Speaking and, of new facilities, I got a chance to, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Crescott took me into the weight room. It's nice. Okay. <laughs> it is okay. nice. Great. Yeah, it is nice. They've had that, uh, they've had that up and running for a little while now. And they, he said almost half the school has signed up for weights class next semester wow okay yeah so it's it's pretty nice okay so it's gonna be a pretty buff school <laughs> yeah i can't pretty, imagine pretty, them not pretty, being yeah pretty buff student body next year yeah uh and they're gonna show off the new uh, locker rooms new coaches office to the and then they're gonna move over to the akron community center after that for a meal mm-hmm. and they're gonna have a, a silent auction and a raffle okay so it's uh alumni only mm-hmm. but uh if you're a valley football alumni and you're you're watching this uh you might want to talk to uh, Michael Lukens or uh, uh, people involved with that uh, for more information. And we also wanted to give out our con- deepest condolences to the family and friends of Ashlyn Foster. Ashlyn passed away on May 14th at the age of 22. 
and that was just uh, an awful, awful news that we heard. And our, you know, Ashlyn played golf and she played tennis uh, at Rochester High School. Graduated in 2020, so she didn't get a senior tennis season in 2020. And we're just heartbroken. Ashlyn was always smiling, always laughing. We always had a fun time with her on the golf course. She was, she could, she could crush a golf ball, but always just, you know, she was a, she was a lifeguard. Um, yeah, just heartbroken to hear of her passing and our condolences to her uh, parents Steve and Allison and her brother Austin Austin played football at Rochester and just heartbroken uh, Ashlyn had she's um she has some her, her mother's maiden name is Depoy so she's got relatives in Winnemac too I know this mm. this is going to be felt this is a loss that's felt in Winnemac it's also a loss felt in Argus um Ashlyn's great aunt is Cheryl Jennings oh Ryan's wife yeah uh, yeah um, Ashlyn's grandma's sister is Cheryl Jennings. So okay. this is a loss that's felt in both uh, Winnemac and Argus as well as Rochester. We're just just awful news, and our and our hearts are, are with the Foster family at this time. Yep. All right. So uh, let's talk a little Rochester uh, softball here. Start things off. Yeah. Let's let's get right to it. Um, ladies' ease finished the season with a record of sixteen and ten. We want to get. Uh, do we want to talk sectional first, or do we want to go right into? Yeah. The, uh, again, I think we we haven't talked to you since the sectional. Of course, Rochester yeah. won those three sectional games. They beat Lewis Cass three to two. Uh, they beat North Judson fifteen to three in five innings, and then they beat Pioneer seven to six in nine innings to win the sectional first sectional title in twelve years. And again, I mean the the Lewis Cass game was a, just a nail biter throughout. They scored the winning run in the bottom of the sixth on an RBI ground out by Jaden Field. The North Judson game. You know they scored nine in the second inning. They were up twelve to two after two innings. That was that was more of a laugher. But then the Pioneer game, again, we were there. Just an, an you know a cla- an instant classic. Yeah, yeah. You know, kudos to the, the Lady Zebras because they led pretty much throughout. But then you know Pioneer takes the lead six to four, mm-hmm. and you know a young team like that they could have folded up tents and and you know went home and and said well we we made it to the sectional championship and that wasn't what they were there for right they they did a really good job of buckling down and and getting the uh the two runs to tie it and it started with the triple by dara strasser yeah yeah and you know i i've raved about dara and her speed you know and boy she showed it there i mean it was it was an amazing uh, hit, but uh, she was at third base before, you know, anybody even realized where she was at. I mean, yeah. she just, you know, sped around the bases. So, right, got, got the got the runs going there. Right, and what we learned about the Rochester team basically throughout that entire sectional run was that their speed, their 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 offense is based on speed, and that's mm-hmm. their identity, and that's something that will help them as they get it going into next year. I think they know now what their identity is offensively. Not just Strasser speed, but then Aubrey Wilson gets on base. She hits what looks like a routine grounder to short, but because of her speed, I think she kind of forces an error. And then she steals second, and when the throw goes into center field, she scores all the way from second on that play. Yeah. So the speed generated those two runs that tied the game at six. And then in the bottom of the ninth, Braylon Hunter singles, goes to second on an what goes to second on an error, goes to third when Jaden Field reaches on an error and then scores in a pass ball. Yeah. Yeah. And that was again speed coming into play uh, in the most important game of the season. Yeah, it makes it makes the defense think, and you know as well as I do when you have to think, that's when mistakes happen. Yeah, when you're just playing, that's usually when you're going to do well. And so that that defense or that offensive speed puts pressure on the defense and and makes them think about what their next move is going to be. And yeah, and Braylon they're... also had the defensive player of the year with that catch and the. Mm-hmm. It was at the top of the ninth inning. Yeah, yeah, it was a great one. A diving catch. Uh, it reminded me of that catch what Kaylee Smith made against McCutcheon about, I think that was back in 2012. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was, I mean, you remember the, you remember those plays. and yeah, I mean, Rochester didn't play a, a, a perfect game defensively, but it's something whenever they, make a, they would make a bad play, they would just recover and make another good play after that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that led up to uh, this week, and uh, the Lady Zebras would head over to Delphi for regional action. And once we finally got going after uh, the first two pitches and had mm-hmm. that lightning delay, um, well, Aubrey brought the thunder. Yeah, but uh, boy, Lexi Miller 
Uh, we were, we kind of raved about her. We hadn't really seen her a whole lot in person, but uh, she's the real deal for the uh, oracles. Right, not just the, not just her speed. I mean, you know, I mean, you figure when you get to a, a regional, you're going to face a pitcher with pretty good speed. But it was her location. Mm-hmm. I mean, she just doesn't throw anything over the middle of the plate. Every, you know, she can hit the corners at will. When you combine that with a good speed, she's just going to be tough to tough to beat. But having said that. Bria Rensberger was right there with her for two innings. That's uh, Wilson with uh, one of only two hits that the uh, Lady yeah. Zebras would muster up in this one. Right, and again, that speaks well to Aubrey's ability to adjust because she had struck out her first time up. And she's going to steal second here. Apparently that was a rough landing. Yeah, well, when your feet almost touch yeah. the back of your head, that's not quite the way you draw it up. Yeah, well, this was this was kind of the start of the the uh, trouble in the bottom of the third. Ari Lattimore with a base hit to shallow right field. We saw there was a lot of dirt behind the the actual dirt. And then this play, I think this was I called it a base hit. I think the the official score called it an error, but that was Emma Draper uh, reaching on a bunt. So all of a sudden, first and second, nobody out. And then this play at the plate, a ground ball uh, to second. The throw to the plate was not in time as the ball couldn't be caught. We call that a fielder's choice and an error, so that made it one to nothing. And then in a, uh, a bases loaded walk made it two to nothing. And then Delphi would score their third run in this play. This is kind of a, a blooper. It'll drop into shallow center field. Dara Strasser picks it up and throws to second for a force out, but another run scores on the play, and all of a sudden Delphi leads three to nothing. And again, it wasn't like they were crushing Mm-mm. Bria Rensberger, but just some well placed balls, the two essentially two bloops, one for a hit and one for a force out. This was one of the more impressive defensive plays. I'm trying to remember, was that it was Hunter to Heinzman. Hunter to Heinzman to uh Wilson, and they get uh, Lattimore trying to stretch a single into a double in the bottom of the sixth, so that retired the side. Yeah, it was a good job there mm-hmm. by Heinzman keeping that tag on there after um, looked like she was in safe, but her foot just kind of popped off the uh, bag a little bit there. Yeah. Braylon Hunter led off the top of the seventh with an infield hit. She would eventually get to third, but the game would end on a strikeout of Micaiah Harding. And but again, Lexi Miller, fourteen Ks. And again, for Rochester, that you know they were really depending on putting the for for them to have a best chance to win, they had to put the ball in play a lot and then cause havoc with their speed. Mm-hmm. When you don't get on, when you don't make contact, you can't cause havoc with your speed. And when you don't get on base, you can't yeah. make their catcher work. Yeah. And it was, uh, but again, that that speaks well of Lexi Miller. Yeah. You know, Delphi, obviously a very experienced team. They made it here last year and, and uh, you know, did very well last year, and they're mm-hmm. a good senior-oriented team. And, you know, for the Rochester Zebras, you know, they're going to obviously miss Keaton Doran, but uh, she's the only one that's going to be graduating. They're going to have everybody back off of a, a team that did, uh, you know, 11 games in a row to end the season. Mm-hmm. You know, good winning streak. Came in uh, second place in the conference. I mean, they got a lot of bright days ahead of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we saw now that, and, and you know, I was talking with Coach Mark Schock of Delphi after the game. He talked about Bria Rensberger's uh, long levers. <laughs> and again, Bria is six one, and I mean that it's not easy to pick up her ball out of the hand and pick up the spin when she's mm-hmm. coming out at you like that. And uh, again, she's just going to be so much better off for all these experiences. And she had a, I mean, just a sensational run there in the, in the postseason and. And not only on top of that, we see how much of a competitor Bria is. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, she have 12 strikeouts against Delphi? Yeah, I think, yeah, 11 or, I think it was 11, but yeah, 11 yeah. or 12. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so she was she was right there. It was just that one inning there that Delphi right. had kind of hot. She walked three all in that third inning. Yeah, yeah. And, but again, she having said that, she really sharpened her control as the season went on. Her endurance got better as the season went on. Um, you know, I, I still remember that Lewis Cass game in the sectional when she struck out the last five batters of the game. Uh, so again, it's again, it's yeah, absolutely a great time to be optimistic. But again, Coach Coleman talked about we, you know we got to get to work too, and I mean, that includes off season work. You know, including in 
uh, you know, in the fall and in the winter. Uh, mm-hmm. Got to get in the gym too. Uh, uh, you know, I think the the defense can get better. Yeah, and I think offensively, got they have to find ways to make contact against uh, you know fast pitching. Yeah, yep. A lot of a uh, lot of good things to look forward to for this Rochester Zebras team. So uh, you know, congratulations on a fine season and. I don't think anybody really uh, expected them to uh, to come out of here with a sectional championship. So, you know, kudos to them right, for that. Right, right. The only ranked team coming into the sectional was Pioneer, and they yeah, beat them. Yeah, we said, uh, you know, big time, uh, you know, um, favorite. I guess you would say for the Panthers. So, uh, yeah. you know, for Rochester to to find a way to get it done and to, to get out of the sectional is. Uh, you know. and, I, and I think we mentioned this briefly during the Delphi game. Is that not only is there a lot of young talent, but there's a lot of young leadership on this team, yeah. too. They're yeah. not lacking in leadership. Yep. All right, let's take a little break here. We'll come back and we'll talk some uh, about the baseball team. Be right back here on Talking Sports with Val. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line, Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyarts' friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We talked about the Rochester softball team, but also had a uh, baseball team that uh, won a sectional championship uh, this week as well. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that. I don't know how much how much have we talked about Val. Obviously, the the first two games of uh, of the sectional. Um, have we talked about that? I, I can't remember if we have or not. Uh. Just a just a quick synopsis. Probably, of, probably uh, during the broadcast we did. Yeah. Of course, so. they, they started with a three to two win in Man- over Manchester in eight innings in the in the Wednesday game in the sectional quarterfinal. That game was zero zero through seven innings. Rochester scored three in the top of the eighth. You got a big two run double by Tanner Reinerts. He doubled off the top of the chain link fence and missed literally by inches of going over for a, for what have been an incredible three run homer. But then as it turned out, you know Carson Paul had then tacks on an RBI single. To score Reinerts and that makes it three to nothing, and that turned out to be an even a, a huge hit as well. Yeah, Manchester gets you know Reese Gertie. He had a double and a homer against the Zebras during their TRC meeting here at Bob Copeland. Well, Gertie he comes up with a big two run double in the bottom of the eighth. He gets it to three to two. They think they have a chance to throw him out at second, but the throw is wild, and it goes into right field. He he goes to third on the play. So now they got it's three to two. Now they got a runner at third with one out. Mm-hmm. And then Carson Pollock. Wow, he strikes out Evan Martinovitz on a fastball. It looked like Martinovitz, who, you know, who did a tremendous job on the mound for Manchester. He threw the maximum allowable 120 pitches, had to be taken out in the top of the eighth. And here was his chance at, at getting a big RBI, and Pollock struck him out looking. And that was just a big out. And then that brought up Harper Sturtzman, their star freshman. 
and he winds up grinding out to shortstop to end the game, and that was what a class. That, that was an instant classic as well. Yeah. The Zebras hanging on, tremendous pitching by Tanner Reinertz and Carson Pollock. Tanner started that game, pitched six scoreless innings. Yeah, and you know that's a huge game. You know Manchester had uh, tied for the lead in the TRC with Peru, so. Uh, you know, also like you mentioned, had won that regular season matchup at Bob Copeland. I think it was nine to five. So, yeah, um, yeah, big big time win for the uh, for right. the Zebras. A Manchester team with a team batting average around three twenty five, three thirty, yeah. and they held them to two runs. Yeah, and held them scoreless through seven innings. So that would set up a, uh, a, a sectional semi final matchup with Bremen, who had uh, defeated. The uh, zebras last year in the sectional, so right, and you could tell this was a pretty motivated uh, Rochester team facing Bremen. I, I know I talked to the kids; they they were, yeah, they remembered that Bremen game from last year, and it was two to two up until the fourth inning, and then Rochester <laughs> scored nine. And I think, you know, again we uh, Corey Good just told the kids to have some fun, and they're not going to beat you with curveballs. You know, hit a fastball, mm-hmm. and it just seemed like the whole outlook changed after that inning five in that inning and all five walks came around to score and then tack on four hits yeah well and i i've give uh, bremen some kudos you know even after that you know you give up nine runs in in one inning you think okay they're just gonna fold it over and quit and it could have went home early and they they held rochester scoreless the rest of the way out yeah. you know so uh they forced them to go all seven innings at least yeah yeah uh yeah kudos to bremen yeah again that's that that's part of uh, the life lessons I guess you learn in high school sports as well because that was, you know, Bremen was on their fourth pitcher by that point and yeah it, it had to have been rough. It was interesting. I, I was talking with um, Corey Good and this was all kind of the pitch count thing was kind of planned out this whole the whole way when the score was five to two. Colton Furvita gets a double that makes it scores two runs that makes it seven to two. Corey Good had told Fur before the at bat he goes if you bring in one run. You're coming in to pitch in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah. So if it if it had been six to two, he would have been in. Because mm-hmm. again, Pollock had started and had thrown fewer than sixty pitches. He wanted Pollock available for Monday, and obviously took the gamble that Ferb would hold on to the lead from there. Yeah. And as it turned out, not only did Ferb drive home two. Yeah. But then Brant Beck drove in two with a double. Barker Casper drove in two, and all of a sudden it's eleven to two, and now you can. Yeah. You can let Ferb pitch and. Yeah. And you didn't have to, and Fur was able to kind of get comfortable on the mound there. He wound up pitching three scoreless innings in relief, and they wound up winning yeah. eleven to two. Yeah, and that allowed the entire pitching staff to be available for Monday, which should be pretty big. Yeah, it did for sure. And you know, it was great pitching effort there by Fur. I mean, he not only did he come in and, and you know close things out, he like you said, scoreless. Yeah. So and he, and he walked only one, and that, that's what you always worry about when you've yeah. got a lead that. Uh, he, he didn't get he didn't get too cute at all. He went right after went right after the Bremen hitters. They held Zach Rao, the catcher, the senior catcher, 0 for four. He had, had that big three run double in last year's sectional final. Uh, the, yeah, uh, they did a great job. Only I think only two walks combined by Rochester pitching in that game. So Wabash had uh, defeated Laville in the semifinal round to set up a uh, Wabash uh, Rochester championship. Last time we had that was 2019 in the. Apaches came back and got that win. Take a look at some highlights here from Monday evening's game here at uh, Chris Root Field. Again, I just love going to Chris Root Field. That's a yeah. beautiful uh, field and just a great place to, to watch a game. Yeah, and it really got off to a rough start for Rochester. Again, Wabash was the visiting team, even though they were playing at their home field. And they scored two runs in the top of the second inning. One was on an error that you see right there. And then there was another base hit. Past the drawn in infield, and all of a sudden it's two to nothing in the second inning. They would tack on to their lead in the fifth inning. Uh, there was an RBI ground. There, there were back-to-back RBI ground outs. Uh, one to shortstop, one to second base. So, and again, Rochester was they were hanging in there. And again, 
Again, you're wondering, why, why are you playing the infield back and giving up a run for an out? You're already down. But I think Corey Good just was confident in, the, in his team, and he was confident that the guys would come back. There's a steal and a throwing error in the top of the sixth. Uh, so Wabash scores another run in the air. They're up 5 to nothing going into the bottom of the sixth. And then everything changed when Corey Good he told them, A, to relax and have fun, and he, then he also made some made a practical adjustment too. Step up in the batter's box against Trevor Daughtry. They were, they were pulling everything, and they were hitting every, a lot of routine fly balls. And then the two-run double by Reinerts made it 5-2, to two, and then this huge two-run double by Jake Seifer made it 5-4. to four. And there was still nobody out. So five consecutive batters reach base. And then that would be the one that would drive home the game-tying run. Brant Beck with a two-out RBI infield single. It ticked off the catcher's glove. Keaton Fields, the shortstop, couldn't get it. But then Wabash would get a little momentum back in the top of the seventh. Uh, Daughtry leads off with a double. And here he's going to try and steal. And he's safe. The throw gets into left field. Drew Bowers charges. This is going to be a close play, but... Daughtry is safe, and Wabash leads 6-5. to five. But Carson Pollock would get out of that inning with any fur without further damage. And then the bottom of the seventh came uh, up, and that was a massive double to straightaway center by Reinerts. They would, they would get in a rundown. They would get back to third, so it was second and third with one out at that point. They intentionally walked Carson Pollock to load the bases, and that would set up Jake Seifer with a fly ball to right field. He uh, throw to the plate is not in time. Sacrifice flying. The game is tied 6-6. And again, Rochester would have a chance to win the game, but Fervita flies out, and that would force extra innings. Uh, Bremen did not have a uh, yeah Bremen did not have a hit in the top of the eighth. Actually, they went down one, two, three. Rochester will get two on in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, yeah, Wabash did not score in the top of the eighth. They went down one, two, three. Rochester in the bottom of the eighth. We get put runners on first and third, but Gavin Young grounds out to end the bottom of the eighth. So we're tied at six. Top of the ninth, Wabash would get a walk, but they would not score. Rochester goes down in order, so we go to the tenth, tied at six. The inning started with a base hit by Drew Bowers. He would go to second on a wild pitch, which was really good base running because the ball did not get that far away from the catcher. That was a single by Parker Casper to win runners at first and third. Drew would avoid the rundown. So Casper would get into second. Coleman would walk. That would load the base. It was an intentional walk that would load the bases, and that's how it would end. An RBI single down the right field line by Gavin Young. Bauer scores, and the celebration would be underway out in shallow right field. And Gavin Young was like, I'm 5'8", 150. That was, that was a lot of weight on top of me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it didn't hurt too bad. Yeah, That's a, that's a happy kind of uh, weight to have on top of you. And Rochester won seven to six in ten innings, and that is about uh, just an amazing game and an amazing comeback. Again, the way they had looked for the first five innings against uh, Daughtry, and they, they were struggling on defense as well. And what uh, just a, an incredible performance by Carson Pollock. I, I, I talked to him after the game. He said, "I felt great out there. My mm -hmm. arm felt great." Yeah. And the last three innings, they it, the, in those three extra innings, Wabash had one base runner, and that was on a walk. They didn't get a bit. They didn't get a hit. The, the double by Daughtry to lead off the bottom of the the top of the seventh was their only was their last hit of the game. Yeah, good good combination between Tanner and Carson. I mean, they've really got things going. And then you can throw Ferv in there if you need to. And you know they got a really good one two three rotation right, right. now. Right, and now and we're seeing the lineup lengthen too. Brant Back had a terrific sectional, not just a terrific game mm -hmm. against Wild. He did the whole sectional. He was really good. Huge hit by Casper. Um, from the nine spot on the batting order, I, I thought seven, eight, nine uh, yeah. really came through for him against Wabash. Absolutely, a couple they times. Were, yeah, absolutely. They they get the bat on the ball, and again, it was interesting. They were they were talking about, and, and this is not. I don't think this is a new subject at all. They, they talk about we like we like velocity. We mm -hmm. like it when you when you're throwing hard at us. Mm -hmm. uh, we could you know 
it's the off-speed guys in the and that have really uh, caused them problems. And you know, if they had to step up in the batter's box and, and taking more of an opposite field approach as that game went on, but I, that's always a nice that's a nice problem to have. Yeah, it, yeah. If you, it's much better than we can't get around on velocity. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, they face Benton Central at uh, Loeb Stadium on Saturday morning. What do we know about the Bison? Well, first of all, they have they have eight seniors in their lineup. Yeah. Eight, eight seniors and a sophomore. Hmm. Um, they're fifteen and thirteen on the year, so they really weren't the favorite in their sectional. They beat Seeger in the sectional final. Yeah, Seeger had beaten Delphi in an absolute thriller, nine to five in eleven innings. So. Everybody was kind of looking at Seager. They were twenty and four going into that game as they're the favorite. Well, Benton Central got them. Yeah, and that that was the section was held at Delphi. So just a great. If you're a Benton Central fan, you're probably floating on air as well. Uh, Benton Central has got two big um, seniors on their team. Tyler, I think his name is Clemmy, K L E M M E. Okay. So Clemmy and Aiden Torres combined. Those two pitchers have thrown over a hundred innings. So it's going to be one of those two on the. If anybody other than one of those two pitches on Saturday, it's going to be a shock. I don't right. know who's going to start. Clemmy pitch the sectional final against Seager. I would guess it would be him, but if it's if it's not him, it's Torres, and we'll see Clemmy in relief. Mm-hmm. Um, again, both of those guys average more than a strikeout in inning, so I'm guessing it's a pretty it's a pretty hard throwing pitching staff, mm-hmm. whether it's Clemmy or Torres. So again, Rochester will get the velocity they want to see. So let's see how they react to it. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a Benton Central team that's played. You look at their fifteen and thirteen. You look at their thirteen losses. There's nothing like. How do they lose to that team? It's a tough. They played a tough schedule, um, tough conference. Um, so I, you know, they're they're going to go in and with a lot of experience. But again, the Zebras have a lot of experience yeah. too. Not not as many seniors, but I think uh, some kids who uh, really have played a lot of high level travel ball. So I'm curious to see how Rochester does uh, in, in this matchup and how. How they handle uh, whether it's Torres or or uh, uh, or Clemmy. Torres and Clemmy are also the two best hitters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, Rochester's definitely challenged themselves this year with their schedule that yeah. they've played as well. So, um, you know, everybody's going to be available for both teams pitching wise. So, uh, it'll be interesting. And you know, I got I got McKenna coming to to do a camera for us. I, last time. The uh, Rochester played Benton Central, and uh, she did camera. It was the football sectional that they won, so maybe she's good luck. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. And then, you know, the Benton Central beat Seeger, or Rochester had beat Seeger, you know, going into. So we'll see. It'd be, uh, it'd be a fun one there if uh, Rochester can get past them. Then it's one game, so they would be uh, regional champions and move on to semi state. Yeah, yeah. So. so- We'll be curious to see who Coach Good goes with. I mean, Reinhardt's, you know, allowed uh, what, four runs over five innings, but I think only one of the four runs against Wabash was earned. Yeah. Uh, and But Pollock was, you know, he had, what, eight Ks and five innings in relief. So we'll see who Coach uh, Good decides to go with. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, again, uh, again, the Z- again, I, you know, the Zebras have never won a regional title in baseball, which was interesting because they've now won 13 13- – this is the thirteenth sectional. They've never won a regional. They never won a regional. Okay. And you know, I remember, I remember what three years ago they lost to Delphi at LCC in twenty fourteen. They lost to Griffith at Griffith. That was, that was really tough. I mean, Griffith had a, Griffith had a kid who wound up playing in the big leagues. I think, or was a first round draft pick. Mm. Uh, you know, we remember they they had that uh, heartbreaking loss. I think it was to, to Boone Grove in 07, to Lake Cent- to Lake Station in 05. They had both of those regional games at home. That was back when. The regional was a Tuesday home regional, okay, or Tuesday one game regional. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, we'll see again. Coach Good has really raved about his kids and their their teamwork and their spirit, and I think we saw that on full display in the sectional. So we'll see how long, we'll see how, you know how long or how much of that carries over now to the regional. Yeah, because a lot of times, in the, when what doesn't even matter to sport, it's are you just happy to be here or do you want to go even further? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have that game for you, assuming we can get everything to work. We're going to go over and do some testing tomorrow, make sure, but uh, have that game for you on ISSA TV coming up on Saturday morning at 11 a.m., first pitch. Yeah, now, I've been to Loeb Stadium before, but this is a, basically a renovated Loeb Stadium. It was renovated about three, four years ago. 
Seating capacity is 1,900. I think it's actually a little bit lower than what it used to be. Mm-hmm. I think they might have taken some seats out. And uh, so I, from what I hear, it's a really nice facility. It's yeah. going to be really, really nice. Yeah, it should be a fun one. And the forecast for Saturday morning is for thunderstorms yeah. hitting right around 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Figures, the, way, the spring we've had. So Right, and the, if you can't go Saturday, then the Monday would be the rain date, and the forecast for Monday is for thunderstorms. So. <laughs> All we'll right, see. we'll uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we can get those in. So yeah, we'll uh, take another break here. Come back, talk some more sports with Val. Criskins Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Criskins is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit CriskinsPoolsAndSpas.com. Call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Criskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. Okay. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val, and uh, we are down to some boys' golf here. To talk a little bit as the conference match was held earlier this week as we get ready for sectionals yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it was held on Tuesday at Rock Hollow Golf Club in Peru. It's kind of interesting. Usually, uh, conference and sectionals are like two, three weeks apart. This time, they're three days apart. Yeah. And uh, Rochester finished, so it's going to be interesting. So. You know, this was their the third time playing at Rock Hollow a Golf Club in Peru, and they wound up finishing second, shooting a 338. They shot a 352 uh, at the Hall of Fame tournament, and then shot a 336 at the Rock Hollow Invite, so 338 this time. But, for, I mean, we were out of Delphi during this. It was pretty windy at Delphi. So if it was windy at Delphi, and, uh, and not only just windy but swirling winds, I imagine the wind was a factor at, at Rock Hollow as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think a 338 is a bad score. Unfortunately, it wasn't as good as Northfield's 332. The Norsemen win their third consecutive conference title. But Rochester put four of their five players on the all-conference team. Noah Riffle and Jerry McLaughlin each had an 81, and Isaac Heishman and Davis Reedy each had an 88. So happy for JR. He missed it last year by one stroke. He gets it. He gets back on the all-TRC team this year. He made it two years ago as a sophomore. Didn't make it last year, now back on it this year. And Noah uh, gets back on for the second straight year as well. Isaac Heisman and Davis Reaney make it for the first time. And Ashton Musselman almost made it a clean sweep. He shot 89, missed it by one stroke. Wow. So uh, I talked to, to uh, Coach Mason Heine after the uh, Rock Hollow invite. This was back on May 18th. He said, I don't know what my I don't know what my 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 big five is mm-hmm. for conference and sectionals. But with Musselman shooting an 89, I think he made the decision uh, easier. For yeah. Mason Heidi. I know, and again, I know Robert Bazo and Enrique Navarro had had some good rounds, so it had to have been a tough decision. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's who I think that's who the five are. And the we'll, number, we'll, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. One would imagine, yeah. 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 So, uh, so again, uh, second place in the conference, and now the again Rochester is the only uh, TRC team 
in the Logansport sectional. So now they go to Logansport Friday morning. It's a 9.30 a.m. start. Again, uh, last year the three teams, the top three teams that made it out were Twin Lakes, Rochester, and Rensselaer. Um, and we don't know a whole lot about Rensselaer. We usually kind of find out once we get to Logansport. Um, but I, one would imagine those will be the th among the top three teams. But the Berries will, playing on their home course, will certainly have a really good chance yeah. as well. I know they, they lost to Rochester by only one stroke when they played them in a nine-hole match a couple weeks ago at, uh, at Dykeman. Um, so uh, we'll see again. If you shoot a, again, Dykeman Park is an easier course than Rock Hollow. I think it would be fair to say it's not as definitely not as long. Mm -hmm. There are quite a few more par threes at Dykeman Park. So a 338, you know, what does a 338 translate out to at Dykeman Park? You'd have to think it would be under 330. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually, if you get under 330, you give yourself a chance. Yeah. I think Rochester shot 327 at last year's sectional. Yeah. You know, the problem was Twin Lake shot 299 at last year's sectional. So. <laughs> Yeah, if they get anything like that, uh, they're going to be tough to beat again. They've got a really good player in Jamison Oosley, uh, but uh, so you'd have and Twin Lakes won that four-way match against Rochester, Logansport, and Winnemac earlier this year. So uh, we'd have to say Twin Lakes would be the favorite to take home the trophy, but certainly Rochester would be certainly a favorite to get out and make it to regional as a team. Yep. So again, that'll be uh, taking place tomorrow morning down at uh, Dykeman Park Golf Course in yeah. uh, Logansport. Yeah. 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 So. All right, uh, let's talk some Argus Dragons. Yeah, softball, baseball, both uh, ended their seasons in sectional play, and both ended their seasons with losses to Culver. Uh, Argus softball finished the year six and fourteen. Uh, they they actually started the sectional with a twenty-two to one win in five innings over Oregon Davis, uh, but then lost to Culver ten to four in the semifinals. This is a team that was pretty experienced. They're going to graduate Carly Rex and Briley Elliott and Lily McMillan and Shelby Weiser and Alicia Sarver and Kendra Burkholder, but they really got some key pieces coming back next year. When you talk about their battery, the Stackhouse sisters, Ivy and Ava. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi Schenkel will be back next year, uh, Lydia Lead and Ella Dean. So uh, they've got kind of the nucleus there, and they've got the battery coming back. I, I, you know, I talked to some coaches from other teams who are pretty impressed by what they saw from Argus and thinks that the program is headed in an upward direction. Yeah, and they'll be uh, playing in the HNAC next year, so that'll be uh, interesting there as well. Right, right. Again, and Knox, one of the better teams in the Hoosier North, is leaving. Um, so uh, how will they fit in? Again, Cat, you know, Caston uh, won the conference, and Knox finished second. Caston, they graduate a lot, and Knox uh, is leaving the conference. So yeah, yeah. again, uh, you know how you know again, they, Argus does play Pioneer every year, so they know what what they're getting into when they see the Lady Panthers. Yeah. And probably the early guess at this point would be Pioneer would be favored yeah, uh, to win the conference. And I think also Ar another team coming in with North Miami that's usually a pretty tough softball program. As right, well. right, as well. And I, I think uh, the Winnemac Lady Warriors will be very good uh, next year as well. So, yeah. uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll see how Argus does. I, I like to think that scheduling will become a lot easier for them mm -hmm. as they move from the Hoosier Plains to the Hoosier. North. Yeah, they only had what one or two teams besides them that even had softball teams this year uh, in the yeah. conference. Well, like, Trinity Greenlawn doesn't have a team, and then uh, South Bend Career Academy wasn't a big conference. Being yeah, with. So I think South Bend Career Academy had a team, but they weren't they weren't very competitive. So yeah, I, I think this will be a lot uh, this will be a lot better in terms from a scheduling and a competitiveness standpoint. Yeah, help them out during the uh, postseason. Yeah, yeah. Baseball uh, also lost to the Cavaliers. Yeah, finished the season 0-19, and they lost 4-2 to, to Culver. The four runs they allowed in that game, that tied for the fewest they'd allowed a game all year. And that's kudos to Jackson Kindig, who you know, pitched his heart out in that game. Uh, but again, they, they just struggled up to, to hit. Um, and again, Culver's, you know, they've got a, they got a pitching staff a lot of velocity, and I think Argus struggled with velocity all year. But it was a, it was a tough year. Um, Joe Kindig... Um, texted me said he was stepping down as coach after the year so Argus will be looking for a new coach I know Joe has said he's gonna you know I know he'd been kind of uh, helped out with basketball with the official scorekeeping and stuff Joe's gonna step away from that as well he just said yeah for about 19 years I've been you know getting yeah. kids up and yeah. out the door for kids school are, kids are out the door and, and I think he's gonna enjoy uh, the empty nest for, for a year I think yeah yeah we'll see how long that lasts we'll see how long that lasts uh, I know Joe. It'll be uh, it'll be a short lived thing. He'll yeah. want to get back into it some way or other. Right. Uh, and, and of course, Jackson Kindig is graduating. He was first team All Hoosier Plains. Mm -hmm. So kudos to Jackson, who you know was a really good uh, outfielder and pitcher for the Dragons. 
and he's one of uh, the other seniors, Jamin Trump. So they graduate him as well. So, but everybody else is back. Mm -hmm. So we'll see uh, again. I think you know how much work they put in, uh, whether it's you know during the summer travel season or in the gym during the off season. Uh, again, moving you know the Hoosier North. You look at the Hoosier North next year. Well, the top two teams were Caston and Laville. Again, Laville's leaving the conference, and Caston's getting hit pretty hard by graduation. Again, the Hoosier North has been a very competitive conference. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how Argus fits into the mix. And then, of course, nobody in the Hoosier North won a sectional this year, but North Miami did. Mm -hmm. They're headed to the Hoosier North with right. Argus. It'll be interesting, too, how they adjust to the back-to-backs. Yeah. Because they'll be playing a lot of, uh, a lot of Hoosier North games. Right, and the, the, this is going to right. This is going to help a lot with scheduling as well. Oh I mean, my they, gosh, yeah. They had s situations where they were playing you know, like like four games on three days, and then they wouldn't play again for a, a week. Yeah, yeah. And th th that's that's you need kind of a, a kind of a rhythm or a pattern of the season, and and I think this will help a lot. Yeah, that locks you into sixteen games at least right there with right. with the conference. So. Right. So that'll be good for them. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how that conference looks next year, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Caston, unfortunately, ran into uh, West Central um, in the first yeah. round of uh, softball sectionals, and the the uh, um, Trojans got them for the second time this year. Yeah, 18-5 and five overall, but 0-2 against West Central. 7-0 and 0 in the conference, three straight conference championships, um, a fabulous run for these girls, but yeah, a tough game against West Central. They had a, the home run in the bottom of the seventh inning to tie the game, and then scored a run in the bottom of the eighth. And you, you feel for for all those kids. Addison Zippelman went three for three against a tough pitcher in Herb. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, uh, she had a great game in the regular season matchup yeah. with them uh, against Herb as well. Yeah. Two home runs. Right. But, that, again, you know, West Central, I mean, again, they had seen Caston so much, and the more you see a team, the, you're not going to be intimidated so much the mm -hmm. next time you play mm -hmm. them. And I, uh, I think that draw really helped out West Central. And, yeah, again, but, again, you're we, we've talked about these Caston seniors and what they meant to the. I, I, I don't – I'm running out of words. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they, they've, they've, they've defined uh, the school. I mean, I – I mean, uh, for, I mean, if, if they, let me put it this way: if they had never played a sport, they would have had a big impact on everybody. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. fact that they played three sports and all of them really well, I think they, you know, we're going to remember them for many, many years, many, many years from now. Yeah, what I they mean, contributed. you have uh, five seniors that are graduating, and that was half of your top ten of your class. Right. Obviously, Addison was the uh, valedictorian yeah. of the class. And now, Alexa Finke made academic all state for softball. I don't know why she was the only one. Yeah. I don't know. The, the valedictorian's a softball player. Yeah. Now we had that issue with Valley last year, but then we found out the coach was. It was likely that the coach wasn't like a member of the coaches' association. Yeah. It wasn't. And it wasn't a. So I. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. It's weird, but I don't know why it was just Alexa. But I mean, they all, again, as people, they all you know were huge parts of it in terms of they were then they had softball smarts as well not only just overall smarts but softball instincts mm -hmm. we told you about that you know when they threw the runner out of third base against pioneer that was a play that they had practiced because they said they're going to do this and they threw out a runner at third base which is doesn't happen very often to pioneer yeah. that's that's their experience too so yeah well and you know addison's going to be moving on to play uh, at purdue fort wayne you know yeah. playing softball there and of course bell is going to be playing basketball up at bethel yeah. So. Macy Hinderleiter was, uh, again, she was so underrated that she wasn't underrated anymore. She was mm -hmm. just a star. She'd be a, she was a, she'd be a star in most other schools. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she was the best third baseman we saw all year by a mile. Yeah. Uh, and, defensively, and on top of that, she was a great hitter. Yeah. And just, a, you know, like you said, just a great group of kids. You, you talk. Right. You hear the football, NFL football teams talk about culture. Yeah. You know, that's their thing. These girls changed the culture at Caston. Right, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have the same mindset that they did five years ago. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, kudos to them, and you just know that they're going to be yeah. successful at right. the next level, at whatever they do. And I think about Annie Harsh's big home run against Pioneer. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, what what a group. And, uh, you know, now next year they do bring back Kylie Logan and Miley Rude and Avery Baldwin. We'll see. But again, it was they were pretty thin depth wise. I mean, that was that was the other thing we were hoping. Like, boy, 
hope this team doesn't get an injury because they were really spread thin. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what, again. That, we'll see what the number situation is like next year. If maybe some kids will say, "Hey, I got a chance to get some playing time next mm-hmm. year." Natalie Warner is another player who'll be back next year. Yeah. What a, she, she had a great freshman year. Yeah, yeah, boy, it's exciting to see what what she's mm-hmm. capable of. Maddie Douglas can play a good second base. Yeah, Maddie Douglas as well. So there's a nucleus, and they might take a slight step back next year. From what we heard, the the middle school program is doing really well. Eleni yeah. Eleni Hipsher mm-hmm. is coaching the middle school program, and it might be a it might be a rebuilding year next year for a little bit. But look, you know, the future looks bright. Yeah, at that, you know, looking to the end of the spring of 2026, 2027. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's talk some baseball here for the Comets real quick. Yeah, they finished the season 13 and 11 overall, 11 and 3 in the conference. They won their first conference title, we think, since 1976. Wow. I think I think I mentioned it was Blake Molenkoff's first as a coach. That was etched in on some caves, yeah. you know, somewhere in the uh basement of uh Casson High School cause Yeah. They, I'm trying to think 1976, then they were still in the TRC back. They might have still been in the TRC back then. Oh, wow. Yeah. Caston was one of the original members of the TRC, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, in the sectional, they got off to a great, a great first game against North White. Had to play the Vikings on their home field, won eleven to one in five innings. It was actually a close game. It was two to one going into the bottom of the fourth. They scored four. That made it six to one, and they scored five in the bottom of the fifth to end the game. Uh, four RBIs in that game for Gavin Molenkoff. But then a tough loss to Southwood, five to three in the sectional semifinals on Saturday. Southwood scored three in the top of the first. Caston fought back, tied the game 3-3, and then Southwood scores two in the top of the seventh, and they go on and win 5-3. Um, that was a Southwood team that was playing pretty well by the end of the year. Um, but, again, I think Caston had four errors in that game. Yeah. And, again, defense. Again, defense was the main reason why that big – they won their last eight conference games. Defense was one of the main reasons why. But unfortunately, it kind of betrayed them in that sectional semifinal game against Southwood. Yeah, this was a Sut Caston team that had a lot of, you know, they gave you tough at bat after tough at bat, mm-hmm. and that that was something that really improved as well. But they're graduating: Lance Hanna, Caleb Stinson, Talon Zider, Tanner Sutton, Ryan Spin, Edison Byram, Carter Klinger, Alex Craig, Pete Duvall, Grant Yaden, and Isaac Craig. That's mm-hmm. a big group of seniors to graduate mm-hmm. again. One of the reasons why Coach uh, Blake Wallenkoff was so even when they were 3-3, three and three, he goes, I stayed kind of even keeled because I knew the talent was always there. Yeah, yeah. But now they graduate just a huge senior class. But you look, but, you know, next year, Gavin Molenkoff will be back. Eli Holloway will be back. I, I was very impressed by Eli as a freshman. He can really hit. Um, Carson Harness will be back. He got a little bit of mound time there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's been around the game. Uh, Noah Hurd will be back. It looks like, you know, with Noah Hurd, you know, you'd have to think Noah will be the the number one pitcher come next year and Noah's had a lot of mound time and then Drew McGrew will be back next year Drew is a, a young freshman who I think saw some mound time in the JV as well so again coach Molenkoff always puts out competitive teams and I wouldn't sell him short Gavin Molenkoff you know it was interesting kind of looking at pictures of him as a freshman and then as a sophomore you can see he's really kind of filled out and mm-hmm. and he's really I mean Gavin's one of the best players in the Hoosier North Conference yeah yeah They'll be back. It'll be uh, maybe yeah. a little bit of a rebuild, right. but uh, right. they got a good program. Right. If Gavin, if Gavin is one of the better pitchers on the team, then you'll have to find another catcher mm-hmm. to will catch when he pitches. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's take another break here. We come back. We'll talk some Culver Cavaliers in our next segment here on Talking Sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. 
Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Welcome back here Talking Sports with Val on a Thursday afternoon. And uh, let's talk some Culver Cavaliers. Can we talk about Cast and Boys Golf real quick? Oh, yeah, did we miss that? Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. they finished fifth in the Hoosier North with a 416. That was at Round Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek. Uh, their five is Max Summers, Luke Graham, Gage Thomas, Jace Rentschler, and Corbin Smith. Max Summers made honorable mention all-conference. Only one senior, Corbin Smith, is the only senior out of those five. So, again, this is a team that's kind of learning the game. Jeremy Rentschler is going to bring it. First of all, he's improved the number situation already. And, you know, the thing about Jeremy is he's a cast and grad. He played for Greg Brash, the great Greg Brash, back in the 90s. And so he's going to bring, I think, a lot of pride to that uh, not that the other coaches didn't, but I think he's going to bring a lot of enthusiasm and pride. I think he's going to bring the number that the, they get eight kids come out for golf is a big deal. Mm-hmm. So, again, the more kids they because I think we were kind of worried, you know, they graduated AJ Dig and Colby Pugh from last year. It's like, who's going to be on the team? So that, you know, the number situation is improving, and I think that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Coach Phelps is running that middle school program, so they have, they have a little bit of a feeder system as well. That okay. will help out as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, they're going, to, they're going to the Logansport section on Friday. I think we mentioned again with Twin Lakes and Rochester, Logansport, and Rensselaer. It's going to – and Winnemag. It's probably going to be three of those five that will advance as a team. We'll see if Caston can advance an individual like they did last year when they had Colby Pugh. But, yeah, it's, it's still a, a young team that's still kind of learning the game. Okay. And I wanted to give a shout-out. Girls track-wise, I wanted to give a shout-out to Brianna Amosquita. Made regional in the discus, finished on, uh, 17th at the regional. But just to make it to regional is a big deal. I mean – Gaston had not had a regional qualifier since Adriana Dag in 2017. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I know Brianna put in a lot of work in the discus and to finish third at the sectional, uh, that was re- really great. That was a tough sectional, too, with uh, yeah. Gwen Howard of Whitco and Addison Veers of Triton in there. Yeah. Well, I saw a picture, uh, couldn't have been six years old, maybe, of mm-hmm. Brianna, that uh, she was throwing a disc. Oh. So, yeah, it was neat because... Usually that's something that maybe junior high you kind of start, you know, uh-huh. but you can definitely tell she was in elementary school and throwing a discus. Yeah. So I, I went. Yeah, she played rock paper scissors with Chuck Evans at the graduation ceremony. It was pretty fun. <laughs> she's she's a fun kid too. Yeah. Yeah. Really happy for Brianna. So yeah, that's not, that's casting. Yeah. So Culver, uh, Culver softball finished the year five and twelve overall, two and five in the conference. In the sectional, they won their first sectional game, beating Argus ten to four in the. Semifinals, I got them into the championship game, and then a heartbreaking 3-2 to two loss to Westville in the championship game. They scored two runs, and again, the game was played at Westville, but Culver was the home team. Culver scored two in the bottom of the first, led 2 to nothing, carried that lead all the way to the sixth. Westville scored two in the sixth, and then scored a run in the seventh to go up 3-2. to two. Culver put runners at first and third with two outs in the bottom of the seventh, and Kirsten Vargas struck out Aiden Mulbash to end the game. Hmm heartbreaking loss. This Culver team, though, has come a long way. I think and, even since the start of the year, you look at the record 5-12, and 12, but I think they're coming on. Very young. All nine starters are freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. They had no seniors, only one junior, mm-hmm. and the junior, the one junior doesn't start. So all nine starters are back next year, including Mulbash, who's just a freshman. Um, they've got Gracie Milam. She's uh, a, you know, a sophomore catcher. Again, you have your battery back. That's going to be big. Looks like Hayden Lute has found a home at second base. Callie England is going to be a nice outfielder. He gives them some speed, I think, in the bottom of the lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, this the, this team is the, the again. I think Coach Overmeyer, you know, he he, he likes his, his athleticism uh, on this team, and I think they're they're headed in the right direction. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how that conference race goes next year. Obviously, with Cast and kind of in a rebuild, and 
you know, Pioneer's got their fair share of uh, girls graduating as well. Right. You know, could Culver, you know, insert themselves into the mix? Not, you know, Knox is leaving the conference. Uh, you know, Culver had a nice win over Triton this year. I know, tr- you know, Triton team has probably had the better of them, mm-hmm. uh, but Culver beat Triton this year. So that's a good, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that's a good sign. But yeah. uh, they've got to cut, you know, again, cutting down on the errors and just continuing to make contact against good pitching and, and then rely on their athleticism to get around the bases. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I think things are definitely looking 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 uh, ahead. But again, we talked about North Miami moving into the conference. Sure. Yeah. Uh, another tough team. Yeah. You know, baseball. It was just you know uh, these weird things that I pick up on. But softball and baseball both played Argus on the same day. Yeah. Both won, and then they both played uh, Westville on the same day, and both lost. Unfortunately, and both lost. Yeah. yeah. And I think throwing. Again, they beat Argus, you know, and again beat a tough pitcher in Jackson Kindig to get to the uh, sectional semifinal, but then they lost to a Westville team who themselves had only won four games on the year. So we thought that would be kind of a dogfight of a game. They fall down six, fall behind six to nothing, get it down to six four, and then Westville pulls away again. Uh, this is a. Uh, again, I think throwing strikes was a big problem for the Culver pitching staff. Yeah. No doubt about their velocity. It was just getting the ball over home plate. Mm-hmm. I think that was a problem at times for them. Uh, uh, they're fairly young, right? They, uh, they do have... Well, they are graduating Jack Rogers and yeah. Adria Gloss. But, of course, those two guys were new to the team, but they are right. seniors. And they graduate Hayden Parker, and Hayden was a big part of the team. Okay. And then they're going to have to fi- figure out who their catcher is because Reese Harrell's graduating as well. Derek, they're going to even get a first baseman because Derek McKee is graduating and Brady Kinderney is graduating. Huh. But you look at who they got coming back next year. They got the McEwen twins. So you get two veteran pitchers will be juniors next year. Mm-hmm. They still have them for two more years. Adam Peterson's a kid who's, you know, he's got a really, you know, he's not the tallest kid, but he plays with a lot of heart. He's got a small strike zone and draws a lot of walks. So mm-hmm. Adam's going to help out. And then Drake Zorich is a freshman. He's he's got a really good bat. Mm-hmm. So again, that's kind of the nucleus of the team next year. But again. Catcher and first base and shortstop, who are obviously key key parts of any defensive alignment, and they mm-hmm. got to figure. That's what Coach Lowry and the staff will have to figure out who they have next year for those yep. three spots. Yep. But if you look at the Hoosier North next year, I mean, again, Caston graduating a ton. They won the conference. Laville's leaving the conference. That's kind of enough for grabs conference again. I think. I mean, yeah. You, you know, Pioneer had a really nice year, uh, but they're graduating Braden Erickson. Winamax graduating a ton. Mm-hmm. North Judson's graduating quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So again, uh, can Culver be more competitive? I don't think they want to go through an 0-14 conference record again. Yeah, and then you got to look. Obviously, we talked about North Miami softball. North Miami baseball had a good year this year. Yeah. Uh, at the end, anyway. Right. And, yeah. And so, North Miami won their sectional. Yeah. So again, you'll go from a, a 14-game conference schedule to, a, I'm assuming, an 18-game conference schedule. And again, playing more regularly will help. Culver as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, well, Culver. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, and then uh, we should mention. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Culver boys golf a little bit later. Um, Pioneer. Let's talk about Pioneer. Okay. Their softball team went nineteen and nine overall, five and two in the conference. Again, two nice wins over Winnemac and Wabash, and then that loss to Rochester in extra innings in the sectional final. Again. You know, again, you start to once you get to these games, and you start to nitpick a little bit, and again, just a, a you know a base running mistake in the seventh inning of the Rochester game, and just some slo- some sloppy defense, and I think mm-hmm. it finally cost them. Yeah. Uh, in the end, um, some some pretty big seniors going to be graduating for Pioneer this year as oh well. Oh boy, I mean, this is you know we talk about. Caston's group, it's a pretty special group of Pioneer kids when you talk about Adeline Kripe and Emma Sells and Kylie Attinger and Casey Webb. I mean, four big ones. Mm-hmm. you got to figure out who your catcher is because Casey Webb basically handled that job for three years. Um, you need two-thirds of an outfield with Adeline Kripe and Kylie Attinger, and that was a really good defensive outfield. Mm-hmm. And then, you, you know, Emma Sells really found a home at that first base spot, so you got to figure out who your first baseman is for next year. Yeah, I know Ava BC had played some first base, but she really found a home at third base. I don't know. Again, Coach Thomas, Coach Thomas, and Coach Armick, and Coach McIntyre will have to figure out uh, where Ava's home is. But obviously, she's going to be a key part of the team, whether she's at first base or third base. Yeah. But you look at who's back. I mean, Ava Ott, Lois Lair, Cameron Newby, Addison Kennel, Holly Zellers, Caitlin Haynes, Ava Bc. I mean, that's a good group to build around. Good group to for build sure. around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So but, uh, uh, just, they, yeah. they seem to be one of those teams, you know, that just finds a way to yeah be competitive every year. Yeah. What what really opened my eyes is I mean everybody talking about Lois as a pitcher. Boy, she's a heck of a hitter too. Mm-hmm. She's again a, this team at what four twenty as a team. I mean it's again I, I would think they're going to be a pretty good offensive team next year, even if it's not a big slugging team. Did you see the one uh, A two A? She made second team one A two A all state. Oh okay. I only the that. only freshman on that list. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So pretty big accomplishment there for uh, Miss Lair. Yeah. So. Uh, baseball finished the year 10, 14, and 1 overall, 9 and 5 in the conference, but they finished on a four game losing streak. Um, and they lost their sectional game to Bremen 6 to 4. So a game they were they were down 4 to 1. They fought their way back. They tied the game at 4. Braden Erickson had a big two run double, and then Lucas Perry had a sacrifice fly to tie the game. But uh, unfortunately, the Bremen pitcher. Uh, Martin really kind of settled down after that and shut them down. Um, you know, seniors, uh, you know, this is a pretty good group. Drew McKegg held down center field. So that's a, and again, was also the leadoff hitter. And then Brandon Sterrett's graduating too. So that's center field and left field you're going to have to find players for. Brayden Erickson, you know, again, a great, a great player. I mean, a, mm. a pitcher as a hitter, uh, as everything. Mm-hmm. He's graduating. Um, Tyler Zeller's actually... He's graduating too. That's that's your entire outfield you have to replace. And Malachi Leal's graduating. He played a little bit of outfield as well. So the infield's pretty well set. It's the outfield that Coach uh, Hardy's going to have to yeah. uh, find some new kids for. And and who's going to be your uh, battery as far as your pitching goes? I mean, he's right. Obviously, with uh, Brayton's just kind of locked that down over the last you know, four years. Right, right. You you never had to worry. There was never a question who the number one starter was in the mm-hmm. last four years. But Ian, you do have a returning catcher in Eli Guffey. Eli's just a sophomore. He is tough as nails behind the plate. You bring kind of that football mentality to baseball. Really like him. He's a good hitter, too. Lucas Perry will be back, so you get first base. And then with Lane, Lane Weldy and Brody Howard, that's kind of the middle of your infield. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll see, obviously, those two guys will see a lot of mound time, I think, sure. next year. Dawson Eggers can really hit. He'll be back next year. And then Noah Miller. Noah's just a junior. Again, Noah's going to see some mound time next year as well, and he's a mm-hmm. pretty solid third baseman. Good hitter as well. And a good hitter, yeah. 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 You know, you look at the Hoosier North, you know, from Pioneer standpoint, looking at the Hoosier North softball-wise and baseball-wise, again, we mentioned, uh, again, with uh, softball-wise, with Knox leaving the conference and Knox handed Pioneer one of their two conference losses, then Kasson's graduating a lot. You think Pioneer will certainly be among the favorites next year, though. Again, that'll be fun when they match up with North Miami, mm-hmm. who's had a really good softball program over the years. And I think Win- Winnemac will be strong next year as well. Uh, Baseball-wise, again, should be wide open. Caston's graduating a ton. LaVille's leaving the conference. So I think Pioneer will be right there, but, it's, again, it's how they can find those uh, reinforcements. But we should also mention going down from 2A to 1A is going to be a big deal for Pioneer. Mm-hmm. And it's, like Coach Hardy said, he, after I asked him after the Bremen game, he goes, yeah, we, we did a lot better this year against Bremen than in previous years. But, again, Bremen's got, what, 550 students, 600 students, mm-hmm. and Pioneer's got 300. Mm-hmm. It's a difference. I mean, that's yeah. and Pioneer going down to 1A. Uh, that's going to be, you know, I think by the time we get, you know, one year from now, we're going to be talking about, hey, can, is Pioneer going to be? Where do they fit in this section? Can could they win it? Mm-hmm. Yep. But uh, boy, and I think see, even for softball, I mean, again, you know, you go to extra innings in the sectional final. Again, it's but it's a different animal when you go to two A. I mean, even Rod and I has talked about it volleyball wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a different animal. So going back down to one A is going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. I think Pioneer is going to it's going to be an exciting year next year for Pioneer. Yeah, yep. Boys golf. The boys golf team finished third in the Hoosier North. Shot a three seventy. Boy, this was a nail biter all the way. Um, Winnemac won with a three sixty seven. Triton also shot three seventy, but beat uh, Pioneer in fifth player score. How about Ivan Reyes, freshman? Conference medalist with an 84. Hmm. Uh, what a f- he was! He was a fun kid to talk to. He's going to be a, uh, a really just a, brings a lot of enthusiasm to the team. Really fun to watch. And then Micah Rands made all conference as well with an uh, Ivan shot 84. And Micah shot 91 at the conference tournament. And then Tate Smith made honorable men- honorable mention with a 96. This team has no seniors on it. Yeah. So they will be among with uh, the favorites. I think going into the conference next year. Yeah. Uh, and then sectional at. Logansport on Friday again. We talked about again Rochester, Twin Lakes, Rochester, Rensselaer, Logansport. Probably three of those four or three of the or Winnemac there. But again, Pioneer will be, 
you know, again, how much will they improve for next year? Mm -hmm. uh, girls track, uh, we've talked about uh, this team and what they accomplished. This team is not only talented, but they're boy, they're still pretty young. Aspen Molinar, Kirsten Nyes, the Harding Twins, um, just a really, really good team. They're going to they're going to miss Violet Montgomery from a distance standpoint. Violet. Mm -hmm. Made regionals in the thirty two hundred, but again, are, are they're going to be they're going to be good again next year, girls wise. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of juniors returning. Aspen, just the sophomore, yeah, uh, done. You know, has done very good in pole vault. Uh, she's great hurdler. I mean, just I think she was on the four by one team. I mean, yeah, she's under seventeen seconds in the hundred hurdles. Yeah, uh, and that you know those re that four by one relay, which ran a fifty one and finished in second place at sectional. Yeah, I mean it's. You know, all four of those girls will be back next year. Yeah. So they'll be a threat again next year. Yeah. Uh, boys track, great, great year for these guys. Um, just a distance running powerhouse. You know, again, just a, it's tough to get out of regional. I mean, the, the, I mean, this is an argument for class track. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at these Pioneer kids, I mean, not many schools the size of Pioneer can go under 330 in the 4x4 four four relay. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're under three by 3 330, you're really moving. Mm -hmm. and and a school the size of Pioneer that could find four runners like that. Yeah. When you talk about Dot, Brooke, Baker, and Kitchell, uh, you know, they went 8 11 in the sectional in the 4 by 8 relay. That's phenomenal. Meyer, Kitchell, Baker, Dot. But again, when you're running into Penn and Elkhart at the regional, mm -hmm. they're hard to beat. Yeah. Elkhart ran 755. I mean, Penn ran 757. Warsaw ran 758. Yeah. At least, at least, I would. Small school, big school, you know, division. Yeah, it doesn't have to be right. Two classes. It doesn't have to be four classes, but right. two classes would sure help. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, so that, anyway, that's my spiel on that. But yeah, great year. Well, and yeah, I, I don't get you know wrestling mm -hmm. and track. I don't get why everything else went to classes and and that didn't. Yeah, right. Doesn't make a lot of sense. If we're gonna do it, do it. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it's. It's a definite advantage when you have a school that has 5,000 kids versus a school that has 300 kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> right. It makes sports more competitive, more. Yeah. Yeah, more fun. I mean, you got enough kids in the in a pen that, you know, they can have their own track meet. Yeah. They can have their own sectional. Right, basically. right. Basically. So. Right. So, again, uh, yeah, uh, I think now Pioneer, Pioneer's going to have to do something. They're going to have to get some sprinters. I think that's that was kind of the weakness of the team, and you look at why you know why did Laville win the conference because they had sprinters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, graduating Ryland Toloza there as well. Yeah, so, they're graduating yeah. Ryland Toloza, and I know Ryland had kind of an injury plagued year, but they're going to miss yeah. him as well. Yeah. So when he was running on all cylinders, though, boy, was he fun to watch. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. So. All right, all, uh, all the Pioneer news you got there? That's all the Pioneer news I have. Okay, let's take another quick break here. We'll finish it up with some Valley and Winnemac when we get back here talking sports with Val. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrien can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest to genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. 
Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins and Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Thursday afternoon, and uh, let's wrap this one up with some talk about uh, Valley and Winnemac here. So let's start off with Tiffany Valley. Yeah, Valley softball team finished the year with a ten and twelve record, and they kind of had a the year that a typical five hundred team has a nice win and then a tough loss. And mm-hmm. again, you know, they had they had a great win over Pioneer, but then they you know they ran into a, a, you know Cast, and again uh, this is a, this was a really young team. You know they they get to the sectional. They're down six to three against Knox. They come up with a dramatic win, seven to six in eight innings. But then they run into Rensselaer and lose four to nothing. And again, um, and that's one, nothing to be ashamed of. Right, that's a great ashamed wrestler of, team. Yeah, North Northcutt from Rensselaer is a very good pitcher. That was, a, you know, a team with a lot of you know they were both you know that was a Rensselaer team they beat last year's sectional. You know Rensselaer would be ready for them, and they were able to scratch out four runs and beat Dale and Buster. Only one senior on this team, Haley Swope, and she didn't start. So basically, the whole team is back mm-hmm. uh, for next year. But is this a team that with a ton of travel ball experience? I think that's kind of yeah. um, what you, what you're wondering about. Obviously, Day Lynn pitches travel, but plays travel, and I think McKaylee does. McKaylee Costello, but uh, do they have a lot of other travel ball players who will, um, you know, be able to make them kind of take that next step forward? Yeah. You know, you you look at the. Because I mean, clearly, I mean, players like Caitlin Threlkel and Casey Shriver and Temperance Cottle and Kaylin Manns. I mean, they're talented players, but now it's kind of getting that experience. I think mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kaylin Manns is really fast. I mean, yeah, she's and, she's in the Dara Strasser category of fast. Wow. Okay. Yeah, softball and baseball. I mean, that's kind of one of those things that you just got to do it a lot. Yeah. You know, you got to get more more touches, as as they would say. Muscle memory. Yeah. 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 Looking ahead to the INSC for next year. Again, you know, Knox, you know, they just beat Knox in the sectional, but Knox is pretty young, and the the Barnes sisters will be back next year. Mm-hmm. Jimtown's going to be tough. Yeah. LaVille, yeah. Really, LaVille really struggled. John Glenn was up and down. Um, and then, of course, Bremen, they have a really strong traditional program. Right. Didn't, win the sec- didn't win their sectional this year, but always yeah. a really strong program. Yeah. Can't ever count them out. In Coach softball. Coach Huppert does a great job over yeah. at Bremen. Yeah, and then you look at the you know the sectional again. We're just speculating because we don't know what softball sectionals look like next year. But if it looks anything like their volleyball and basketball sectionals, I think it's gonna be wide open. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Fairfield is solid and Wallasey is, you know, a lot of teams right around the five hundred mark like, like Valley. I mean, mm-hmm. Northwood has Northwood's improved a little bit, but they're, they're right yeah. around five hundred. They're not yeah. gonna be impossible to be if that's what the sectional looks like. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Columbia City plays in that tough NE8. Uh, you know, will, will they be in a sectional with them? Yeah, we'll see. But yeah. again, with Dale and Buster, do you have a chance? Yeah. All right. Baseball, they finished the season four and fifteen. Um, lost to Knox nine to four in the sectional semifinals. Uh, nine errors by Valley in that game, and then Tech on six walks by Valley pitchers, and it's not gonna. It's gonna be a tough day for you if that happens. Disappointing because I think Knox was a really winnable game. Mm-hmm. Knox also had a losing record coming in, and then Knox winds up losing thirteen to nothing to New Prairie in five innings in the sectional final. Again, that was New Prairie's sectional to win. I think all along, nobody, right, right. I mean, too many people are surprised. This will be a dandy of a regional game, by the way. Hanover Central and New Prairie at Griffith, I think, on Saturday. That will be an awesome game, by the way. But Valley is graduating the following seniors: Ike Ramsey, Landon Durkis, Kyler Johnson, Bobby Burke, Cameron Manuel, and Aiden Shepard. But of all those, really, just Ike and Cameron were the main senior contributors. Uh, but obviously, with Ike graduating, Ike could catch. But all those are really good defensive outfielder, and of course, Cameron Manuel is the ace of the ace pitcher on the staff. Right. But having said that, the pitching has got to get itself worked out. I mean, an 8.07 ERA, yeah. that is rough, and yeah. 120 walks and 109 and a third innings for the season as well. Mm. That's over a walk and inning. That is that is a problem. Yeah, yeah. So they just got to get the ball over the plate next year. But you look at who's back. I mean, Hunter Paxton, really promising kid. Freshman, Jamison Phillips, just a sophomore, good athlete. Wes Haynes, Luke Tucker, and of course Braxton Alderfer. You got a catcher now who's just going to be a sophomore next year. You got three more years of him. 
Mm-hmm. So he, and he's going to be a really promising hitter as well. Mm-hmm. And again, this was another program that really struggled with sk- scheduling wise because whenever a team, again, as an independent, because whenever a team had to reschedule a game, that Valley one, would get on the chopping block. And yeah. again, Valley had these situations where they were playing like three games in three days, and then they wouldn't play again for a week, or they'd go to a tournament, and then they wouldn't play again for another five days. So getting just a more consistent rhythm in the schedule, I think, will yeah. help out, especially when you go to the INSC. Again, it'll be interesting to see if they do a two-game set like uh, HNAC does, just because there's there's only six teams. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. I think Jim Town's going to be really good next year. John Glenn is a great. I don't mean, they have they haven't been as good the last couple of years, but Jim, Jim John Glenn's pretty traditionally good. Yeah, we saw Bremen. Um, they're graduate just the other day. We saw, they're graduating some kids. Uh, yeah. But they're bringing some kids back. Bremen, yeah, still got some good pieces coming yeah, back. I don't think anybody's feeling too going to feel too sorry yeah. for them, even yeah. though they're losing some kids. And of course, they just lost to Knox in the sectional. Yeah, uh, Laville graduating uh, a plumber. Yeah, just plumber, right? Uh, you know, plumber's the main kid, but yeah. Zarnecki will be back. The Schwitz kid, the Schwitz kid's just a sophomore. Wolford's just a sophomore. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it'll be a competitive conference. It'll yeah. be a good conference. Yeah. Girls tennis wise, the team lost to Columbia City 5 0 in the sectional. That was a couple of weeks ago. Still a good year, and no seniors on this team. Yeah. So the, they will all be back next year. We talk about, uh, you know, Kerrigan, Callahan, and Ellis Sandbachen, and Sarah Finney. Just trying to think through the, the conference for uh, what tennis would look like. I know, you know, Glenn, but I don't even know. Does Jimtown have tennis? I don't um, know. Yeah, it's you know, a good some one. of those. You know, LaVille, I don't know, do they have... They have tennis, but they... Not a real good program. Not a real yeah. good program. Valley would be favored to beat them. Valley would be Knox. favored to beat Knox. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Bremen. Bremen. Bremen, though, they're, they're a Pretty quality tennis girls' program. tennis program yeah. every yeah. year. Yeah. They have a so. nice facility there. So, yeah, that, yeah, I think that would be... And I think when Valley played Bremen, they lost 3-2. to two. So, so, yeah. Bremen, I, Bremen Valley probably will be uh, shooting for that one. One would imagine. Yeah. 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 Uh, Though, again, Coach Ackerman does a really great job with the team, and they're really dedicated. And uh, Again, but as, when you're in a section with Columbia City and, and Warsaw, it's going to be tough to, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, that there's a reason why Valley's never won a sectional title because they're in the, with Warsaw all the time. Any, any possibilities that that sectional will change, or is that pretty well set? If it, if it would have changed, it would have changed last year, and it didn't. So I'm okay. guessing it'll stay the same yeah. for a while. Uh, boys golf, they've had a great year. You know, we... This this team has you know they lost Greg Miller and we were kind of wondering what this team would be like. They've yeah. had a great year, ten and two yeah. in dual matches. Had a great win over Plymouth, a good Plymouth team the other day. Um, the sectional has moved though. When I, I reported this on the blog today. It will not be held at Rosella Ford Golf Club in Warsaw. Instead, it will be held at Eagle Glen Golf Club in Columbia City, and it will be held at eight a.m. Monday. This is it had been typically been a Friday sectional. It'll be a Monday sectional this mm-hmm. year. At Eagle Glen in Columbia City, so we'll see how they do. This, of course, the the schedule, the the sectional field stays the same. When you talk about Warsaw, Northfield's in that sectional. They just won the TRC, Col- Culver Academy. You know they'll be competitive. Plymouth is solid. is solid. So we'll see again. Valley's got a chance to get out as a team. It's been a while since they've gotten out as a team, partly because the sectional is just so brutal. Mm-hmm. But they've got a chance this year. Eli Love, Ethan Young, Wes Parker, Nash Baus. That Shambaugh has been coming on too. Shot a forty for nine holes the other day. Boy, this team's. I mean, th- th- you got to put up a low number, but this team's got a chance. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, really, how well they've done. You know, yeah. obviously with Greg graduating and yeah, um, you know, you don't have that one superstar like you had, but everybody has really just increased their uh, their game and dropped their scores a little bit. Yeah, and Coach Parker's done a great yeah, job with this whole yeah. group, and wet. You know, wet. Wes is he's a solid number one. You have to get under 320, though, to get out, I think, mm-hmm. just to have a chance to get out. Yeah. It's an interesting course. I've played that course before. Um, not overly difficult, but uh, it's got some interesting uh, hazards and stuff. Okay. If you can get uh, – there's some, some wetlands and some stuff there towards the uh, – would be the east part of the course there okay. and stuff. So. We'll see how the weather holds up. I'm yeah, like yeah. Girls track. Betty Shepard made state. Yeah. And the 300 hurdles. Congratulations to Betty. She will run at approximately 7:20 p.m. Friday night at okay. Bloom- down in Bloomington at the state final. She's the number 26 seed out of 27 runners. So do they just run 
like three heats and then get the best time, or do they actually have like a finals for that? Three heats and get the run at the best time. Okay. So I assume the top nine will run. They're in their own heat. Yeah. And then the next top nine and then the next nine. Yeah. So Betty made it. She's the 26th seed, and who's the number 27 seed? Annabelle Parker from Warsaw, who's Betty's cousin. Hmm. They both made state. Yeah. They went second, two and three at the at the regional at uh, nice. Kokomo. Yeah. So that was really nice. Really happy for Betty. Yeah. Uh, 47.5, and it's going to take something in the like the 43s or low 44s if you want to get on the podium. It's it's a tough, yeah, tough meet. But Betty's just a sophomore and just yeah. had a fantastic year. Boys track, Wade Jones, back at state, third straight year. Uh, he will be running at about 5.40 p.m. on Saturday in the heats. If he gets out of the heats, he'll uh, make it to the finals, which will be later on in the evening. He's the number 22 seed, though. Uh, he ran 22.41 at the uh, regional at Goshen. He ran 22.06 when he won the regional last year. Mm-hmm. This year he was third at the regional. Two kids from Penn beat him out. Yeah. Uh, but to get he was the number he was actually the number four seed coming in. He was we talk about Wade. He was not a lock. He was not a lock to get out, but he got out. Mm-hmm. He beat a kid from El, there's a kid from Elkhart who was really good. I think Wade made it by .07 seconds. Not a big margin. <laughs> Not a big margin. So Wade back to state for the third straight year. Yeah. Yep. All right. That all for Valley? It's all for Valley. All right. Winamax softball. A good year, 16-9. and nine. I think we didn't know what this team was going to look like, but 16-9 and nine had a really nice year. Because mm-hmm. it, kind of it was kind of one of the younger teams that Jenny Belcher's had. Mm-hmm. You know, we, that loss to Pioneer was just a, a, an agonizing loss. They lost 7-4. to four. They got the leadoff man on base in each of the first six innings. But only scored in two of those six innings. But having said that, you know they were competitive in the conference. Their only two, their only conference losses were to to Cast and, and Pioneer. They're a good team. They're going to miss Maggie Smith. They're going to miss Olivia Link. Both of those two, by the way, um, first team academic all state. Mm-hmm. Maggie and Olivia. Mm-hmm. Gabby Joseph, Isabel Decker, Olivia Browning, Piper Link all graduate as well. Um, you know, but uh, again, 16 wins. But you got Brooke Rush and Adriana Hall coming back. Brooke's just a sophomore, and Adriana's just a freshman. And those are your two pitchers. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll have them for at least two more years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at the Hoosier North next year. Again, we've talked about this. Caston graduating a lot. Pioneer going to be good. Knox leaving the conference. So where does Winnemac fit in? Yeah. yeah. Winnemac has not beaten Pioneer since 2017. That's got to, you know, it's frustrating because, you know, Winnemac's hardly a pushover program, but they yeah. just can't get by the Lady Panthers, yeah. and you just kind of have a feeling that that might be the matchup again that decides it next year. Of course, North Miami will have something to say about it as well. Sure, sure. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Yep. Sectional outlook, well, um, we just talked about the the INSC. Well, f- if that's what the sectional is going to look like, uh, for win- then that that's what the INSC is going to look like, then that's what Winamax sectional might look like, and you're like, what? But Winnemax in a sex, in a volleyball and basketball section with Bremen, Jimtown, uh, Knox, and uh, Laville. So assuming they're in a softball section with them, hmm. you know, will Winnemax have to run into a Bremen or a Jimtown in the sectional next year? Yeah, or a Knox. Or a Knox, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, again... And I'll be curious to see who hosts. Again, Winamax got a brand new field, mm-hmm. uh, so I'll be interested to see who hosts that as well. That could be a Newton Park, yeah, possibility yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's again, uh, again. I, I think I think it's Winamax going to have a nice team, but they're going to certainly miss Maggie Smith and everything she brought to that team. Yeah. What did I see? Uh, she had sixteen letters. Sixteen. Yeah. It's yeah. It's amazing. It's crazy. 16 letters. Yeah. Uh, the baseball team finished the season 10 and 10, lost to North Judson in the sectional quarterfinal, 6 to 5. You mentioned this. John Malco hit a grand slam in that game. Winnemac led the game 5 to 1, but Judson came all the way back to win on their home field. Again, this is a, a Winnemac team that, again, you know, again, they, they struggled offensively from time to time. The pitching was great all year, but just struggled to put runs up on the board. Mm-hmm. This team's graduating a ton. Connor Burton's graduating, Max Gearhart, John Malco, Eli Butka, Addison Allen, Maddox Basinski. Maddox is going to play baseball at Manchester University, Aiden Jimenez, solid third baseman, um, Hunter Ross, Wyatt Wheeler. That's a lot mm. that's, that's a lot of experience leaving for Coach Hendricks. 
But again, look, look who they have coming back. Cash Roth will be back next year. So you know you get a solid, a really solid catcher. You got a, and then two really solid pitchers in Brody Wensler and Hayden Mathias. Mm -hmm. So those are those those guys will probably be your guys in your conference games. Hayden had a really good year on the mound. Um, Brody, uh, you know, a lefty, really solid. So again, the, the nucleus will be there and the battery. But again, it's going to come down to, I think, hitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you look at the Hoosier North again. Caston won the conference. Laville's leaving. Again, Caston, Winnemax graduating a lot, but Caston's graduating a lot, and this is going to be a really competitive conference, and North Miami's coming in, and they're going to bring in a pretty good pretty good unit, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, the McIntyre kid from North Miami uh, who pitched in the sectional final, he's, he's just a sophomore. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, North Miami's kind of young. They just won a sectional. Um, yeah, and then you look at the sectional uh, kind of outlook. I think, we, you know, again, it'll be a, it's a tough 2A sectional, no mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. I think... I think Knox will be competitive, Jimtown competitive, Bremen. If that's who, if that's if that's who's in their sectional, again, right, we don't right, know right. this for certain. Bremen, pesky, mm -hmm. so it'll be a tough sectional. Mm -hmm. Boys golf wise, kudos to Coach Jeremy Shell and his conference champion Warriors. Three sixty seven, mm -hmm. they won by three strokes in a nail biter of a conference tournament at Ron Barn Golf Club at Winnemette at Ron, Gar Ron Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek two weeks ago. Uh, they had uh, Talon Garner shot an 87, made all-conference. Noah Garner, 90, all-conference. Brendan Hyen shot a 94, made honorable mention all-conference. And Logan Friedel shot 96, made honorable mention all-conference. How many years in a row is that? Uh, I think it's two. Maybe three. I think it's two. So, yeah. And uh, you, know, you know what Logan Friedel's nickname is? He is doing golf and track at the same time, so his nickname is the Male Maggie Smith. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, and yeah. I believe Logan won the conference championship in the was it the four hundred meters, the eight hundred meters. Yeah, Logan's he's yeah he's a really good runner as well, and he, he was honorable mention all conference in golf. But did he do two fall sports too, though? Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's kind of where the comparison, half of Maggie. It's kind of where the comparison yeah. falls apart. Yeah. Um, again, going to that sectional at Logansport, again, you're a conference champion, so you got to be feeling pretty good about yourself. The only problem is you got Rens you got Twin Lakes and Rochester and Logansport and Rensselaer, and you got to beat at least two of them. Mm -hmm. So we will see how they do. Yeah. Uh, Cooper Fulmer is the number five player on that team, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, girls track, Maggie Smith. It was amazing. Maggie played in the softball sectional on a Monday and then, played, and then ran in the track regional on the Tuesday, the day after. Uh, she will be missed in the eight, you know, in the eight hundred meters, and then that relay, that four by eight relay. And boy, Marissa Iverson had a great sophomore year. Made it to regional in the high jump, went four ten. Mm -hmm. So again, Marissa, you can tell she's a really good athlete, and yeah. I think that confidence she gained during basketball kind of translated into mm -hmm. the track as well. Yeah. Uh, boys track: Charles Dysinger and Max Keller both made regional. Both were shot putters. Charles won the won the sectional at uh, Rensselaer. Max was third. Charles is just a sophomore. Max is a senior. He's graduating. So. Yeah. Pretty impressive to get two shot putters through. Yeah. I mean, usually you get one of, you know, the field event. So to get two of them through, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So give the, uh, give the thrower's coach a raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think we've been through everything here, Val. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. Just one last note. Uh, I think the Porter County Conference announced they've come to an agreement with, I think it's called Jed TV, which is based out of the region. It's an entire conference network of, of athletic events will be streaming hmm. in the starting next year that is going to be great uh so if you're like a morgan township fan or a or a, a washington township fan or a uh, you know a couts fan or a, a south central fan not football but yeah i mean the all the apparently all these games are gonna put, they're going to put them all on tv next year mm -hmm. they put them all on the network i think this is a real big step forward for for TV coverage of sports uh, in the state, in the northern part of the state, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's something that I'm really excited about because I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think it's a sign that you know what we do is making making a difference. Yeah, and, yeah. I was and gonna what say, they we're do practically is making... a HNAC conference. I mean, we cover almost all the conference schools in the HNAC. And yeah, pretty good coverage there. So yeah, so that, that that's really exciting, and I and I and I hope it kind of trickles to where. You're going to expect games to be on. It, expect games to be on TV, and people mm -hmm. want to. People want to take part in, in the in the, in the yeah. telecast of it. Yeah. So that it's it's just a really bright future in in what we do. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. Well, that'll do it for uh, today's show. Uh, like I said, Val will be at the golf uh, sectional tomorrow at uh, Dykeman and Logan Sport. We will be at uh, Loeb Stadium on Saturday. Hopefully we can get that one in if the weather cooperates as the Zebras take on the Bison. So uh, interesting matchup there. And uh, see if uh, Rochester using a, can... Using a stampede who? Yeah, I got the uh, trivia question and answer already because you're going to ask me how many regionals Rochester's won. So okay. I know the answer to that one. All right. So uh, we'll be there for that one. And, of course, graduations. Uh, we'll have Rochester graduation on uh, Channel 4 and on the web tomorrow night. That's a 7.30 start. Conoqua just found out they're starting at 10 on Saturday, not 11. So Dakota will be there for that. And then Valley and Argus both graduating on Sunday. So busy weekend, but uh, that's the way we like it. So we'll be back next week. Talk some more sports with Val. Thanks, everybody.